So your talk is about radio frequency identification. Um, is this something that you work with before or this is something that you are just simply passionate about? Tell worked, us more about it. I worked on this topic during my PhD and um, I explored the issues of security and privacy. But maybe let's go directly to the talk and I'll explain more details. Everyone, Slava with RFID. Thank you very much. As already announced, I would like to talk to you today about radio frequency identification. So, radio frequency identification, what does it actually mean? It means identification of objects over the distance, using radio waves as a communication means. And though the name may sound complicated for you, I'm pretty sure you have already seen a couple of examples in the real life. For example, you might have seen the special security uh, labels uh, embedded into clothes to prevent shoplifting, or you may have already used contactless credit cards for payments, or such contactless access cards. But radio frequency identification is not only limited to these examples. It can also be used for tracking, and in particular, tracking of livestock. Imagine you are a farmer somewhere uh, on the alpine meadows, and you want to make your cows happy, so you let them enjoy the sun and walk wherever they want. But by the end of the day, you would like to know the exact more or less uh, exact location, in order to bring them back for a night to a safer place. For that, you uh, use special tags, you attach them to the ears of cows, they have a battery inside, uh, they, are, they are called active tags, and they can work on much larger distances than that in the previous example. Uh, but if uh, it's not tracking. There is also an example of the future, which, is, which now works only as a prototype, but it has an ultimate goal to make the checkout process in the supermarkets faster. Oh, that would be great. Let's see if it's possible to do with RFID. Place the basket in the robotic checkout system. The bottom of the basket opens, and the items go down below. There, the items are placed into a plastic bag, and the RFID tags are read. The total is displayed here. All that's left is to pay. Your items are ready. Cool. Let's look a bit more into more details of how this works on the technical level. So the items in the shop are supplied with, an, with RFID tags, and each RFID tag uh, is composed of a small microchip connected to an integrated antenna. This microchip contains an identification number of an item. When these uh, items, when, uh, when RFID tags, gets closer to the reading device or to the scanning device, in our case it was a payment terminal of the shop, this RFID reader sends a request to all the items and they reply with an identification number. Then the payment terminal can uh, look up into the database for the identification numbers and calculate the price of an object. In a similar way, it works uh, with multiple items. They can be scanned simultaneously. They uh, reply with the uh, identification numbers. And the payment terminal is able to calculate the final price of your purchase. Now, imagine you walked a bit further away, let's say two meters from the shop. You carry your items in the shopping bag. And there somewhere, there is a hidden RFID reader of a hacker. And this RFID reader transmits requests to all your tags. It queries them and they, they respond. They have no other choice, there is no security. They simply respond to every reader that queries them. And this reader is then able to find out which items you carry in your bag. And this is indeed a major privacy um, concern. This information can reveal a lot about you. For example, your interests or political attitude from the books you read, 
or your financial status from the watches you bought, or your health status from the medicines you bought. And this is something we have to keep in mind. Is there any way to, uh, to protect your items and to protect your data, to protect yourself in, uh, in uh, this case? Actually, yes. The easiest would be simply to remove the tag right after the purchase and recycle it so that you don't carry it with you anymore. Uh, yeah, this, this is a solution, but in this case, you will lose some so-called post-purchase benefits. And if you decide to return the items or to request a guarantee, the shop will not be able to identify these items anymore, and this service cannot be then provided. So, um, now let's look at the other example. As I said, you have heard uh, uh, about several examples that are used in the real life, and I'm pretty sure most of you have even now objects with RFID tags inside. In the example of access cards, contactless credit cards, or even in the modern uh, identification documents. There is a plastic page, and there is an RFID tag embedded into it. And these cards, they... Uh, represent a lot about your identity. Uh, they represent very sensitive information. Are they protected better than in the case with the um, uh, shopping items? No, unfortunately, no. And uh, this, this is something we have to think about again. Fortunately, there is a way to, um, to physically uh, protect your items. But before, you, before we go to that part, let's Let's, uh, let's make a proof. Let's check if it, is, uh, if, it is really, if it works really like that. If everyone can get access to your credit cards. You can download this uh, free app for your mobile phone and can check on your uh, contactless credit card. You can scan it and you will get all the data from your credit card. Now, I doubt that not everyone who uses the, this app um, uses it for research purposes. As I said, there is, uh, fortunately, a way to protect your data in such cases. You can simply put them into a metal case or wrap them with a foil. Uh, in this case, you simply disable any radio communication and you take your cards out only at the moments when you need them. For example, you make a purchase and put them back when you don't need them. Uh, but let's have a look at the other example with uh, items much, much bigger than cards that you can't really put into a metal wallet. Cows. <laughs> and in this example, you can not only not put the, these cows into a metal box, you should uh, have the, uh, the technology working for you. Because in this case, you would like to track your belongings. So you should ensure that the technology is working, that the radio signal is transmitted. But from the other case, you don't want your neighbor to know the location of your cows, right? Because this information would help him, for example, to steal them. So the, in this case, a completely other approach should be used. Uh, namely, we should check the identity of a device which is querying the tags. And the tags should only respond or reveal the information about them only to real owners of these objects. And here uh, comes into play special authentication protocols. Authentication is the way to check the identity of a person who is talking with you. And in RFID, uh, these authentication protocols work in such a way, as I said, uh, tags respond in any case. So you cannot make something that they don't respond. They will respond anyway. Uh, in this case, in case of RFID, um, we encrypt the identifier of an item and only the owner of such items with a special secret key would be able done, then to decrypt uh, the identifier and finally understand what the object he is uh, communicating with. And the, uh, any, any kind of a hacker who doesn't have, yeah, they, they should not have a secret key. Therefore, they will not be able to get anything out of these random numbers. Yeah, so uh, actually, uh, these protocols are quite complex. And if you would like to know more details, you are encouraged to read my dissertation. It's around 98 pages, so not very much. And there is... 
<laughs> and there is a short version of six pages of a conference article. Um, but in, in general, so we talked today with you about different examples of RFID, about several security issues, uh, and we know that in many applications your data, is not, uh, your data are not protected. Do we need to care of it? Um, technically, it is easy to eavesdrop this data, to steal this data. Organizationally, it's more difficult because you have to mount the RFID readers somewhere uh, in public place so that others don't recognize them. Or you have to be close enough to the objects, for example, to your contactless cards, and it's organizationally quite difficult. Um, from another side, I should tell you that if the one wants to get your data, I'm pretty sure he will. So please take care and thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for the talk, Slava. At the moment, we have five minutes time for questions. So anyone have any questions? And Andre will roam around the room with the microphone. And uh, let me just say, please let Diane repeat the question so everybody knows what the question is. Hi, thanks for the talk. Thank you. Two quick questions. How much data f will an RFID chip return and how expensive is it these days? So the two questions. First is how much data will it allow to be stored? And the second one is how expensive it is to implement this technology. RFID tags normally contain only, only an identification numbers. There are different modifications and they can um, have more data, but we are talking on a simple case where there is an, identifi an identification number, it can be 128 bits long, if it gives anything to you. Uh, so it's quite much. And they should not be expensive, so when you buy them in bulk, for example, for the uh, supermarket case, they should cost actually less than one cent per item. Okay, I think I see a raise of hand around here. Yes. yes. Hey, um, my question is, do the, the current credit cards, the, the payless, uh, the, the, the wireless credit, contactless credit cards, do they use this um, encrypted protocol or is it just planned for the future? Okay, so the question is, does um, credit card that has this RFID tag use an encryption protocol or this is something just for the future? This is something for the future and as I said you can have a look at this app you can install it to your phone. I have checked it with my credit card. Uh, you can check it this way if this data are encrypted. They are encrypted in some way uh, but I believe not very strongly so that the application will actually get the data of your credit card. So these protocols is something for the future. Um, this is on the process of standardization. So it's, it's actually a long process to prove the protocol, uh, that it's secure enough, and it takes time. Okay, so thank you so much, Slava. You're welcome. Thank you. <clears throat>